Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice even though the pews are empty. Bethel, let me just say how much we miss you getting dressed this morning. I told Pastor, you know, this is getting old, getting dressed to go to an empty sanctuary. But we thank God that even though the building is empty, we know you're in a sanctuary wherever you are, wherever you're watching, whether it be at home, whether you be on the road, whether or not you're an essential worker and you're at work and we're praying for every essential worker uh, that is still being called into work, whether you in your PJs with your wa waffles and your coffee, I need you to put it all down because for the next hour or so, the Bethel experience is coming live to you and in living color. It's Palm Sunday, the Sunday that begins Holy Week where Jesus makes his walk to the cross of Calvary. And so, once again, we know we worship for an audience of one, just spectators viewing. And so we've got an empty sanctuary again. Nobody in here, but God is here. Hey, Bethel, we want you to do something to really make you feel like you're back in corporate worship. And Pastor is about to give you some instructions on what we want you to do. Great morning, everybody. Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. We want you to do what we always do here at the Bethel Church. Although you're home, take an ussy and post it to the Bethel Church page. We still want to see you. We want to see your faces. We want to feel the love that you have at home. So take an ussy and post it to the page so we can see it after worship today. We do miss you, but we know we will see you soon. So take your ussy and post it to the Bethel page. Hey, this is what I want them to do, Pastor. When you take the ussy, I want you to do hashtag Bethel virtual experience. That's what I want you to do. That was kind of cute when I came up with that. Yeah, so take your ussy, and then I want you to hashtag Bethel virtual, I almost said Bethel ussy, Bethel virtual experience. Everybody, that way we'll be able to snatch them, our media ministry, and we'll be able to post them. I've got two major announcements I'm going to do after the praise team. Don't you go anywhere because these announcements are going to be major for next weekend. And then we're going to get into the word. Praise team is getting ready to start this worship off. I need you to prepare your hearts. I need you to prepare your minds. Get everything else off your mind real quick before we go to the praise team. If you're watching me on Facebook Live, hit the share button so that others can share or hit watch party host a watch party so everybody can be in your party with you call or text somebody tell them the bethel experience is on it's about to be an amazing day of worship come on let's go to the praise team
Listen, we, 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 we tried to do something a little different today. Praise team did praise and worship from the historic sanctuary. Call me Bias. That's the sanctuary where I confessed Christ as Savior and was baptized. The acoustics over there are absolutely amazing. And I hope you didn't just watch, but you participated as they talked about the faithfulness of God. Listen, I need you to be ready because before the end of this worship, you're going to sing that no matter where you are. You're going to sing that with us in the midst of this worship experience. Listen, just a couple of quick things before we get into this word. One, if you desire prayer while we're on live this morning, we have a prayer line that you can call 904-438-4922. Nine zero four, four three eight four nine, two two. We've got intercessors waiting to pray with you and lift you and encourage you. Listen, many people may not know, but every weekday morning, Monday through Friday, we have corporate prayer. Every day there's a different focus. And beginning this week, starting on Friday. Prayer week is going to end with Bishop. I'm going to be praying every Friday, a little word of encouragement, and then a prayer to thank God for that week. And if you want to join in on our prayer time, it's at 6.52 a.m. Monday through Friday. And that number is 1-855-200-2020. 1-855-200-2020. And I want to encourage you to join us Monday through Friday in that experience. Well, next weekend is Resurrection Weekend. One of the things that we do know, I heard the president say yesterday, this is the first year probably, uh, he said in the history of the country, we know that's, you know, that's hyperbole, but that we won't be able to celebrate Easter. I think he showed his lack of understanding of theology right there because the reality is he was talking about the co-opted commercialization of Easter. But we know that Easter is not for consumers, it's for the kingdom. Easter is about celebrating the resurrected Savior of the world. And he isn't just risen on a weekend, he's risen forever. Which means our celebrating resurrection, one, is not relegated to a certain weekend. But secondly, just because folk cannot meet or shop or have egg hunts or bunny rabbits that have nothing to do with Easter that doesn't mean we can't have Easter the reality is Jesus Christ is alive and because he's alive we can celebrate Easter so I'm sorry Mr. President we will have Easter next Sunday because our Savior is alive and well I've got some great things next weekend first and foremost Easter Sunday I know it's first Sunday and People say, well, that's the Sunday you celebrate the Lord's Supper. I need y'all come closer to get this. The Bible never says, as you do it on first Sunday, you do it in remembrance of me. That's tradition. That's not Bible. I'm getting in trouble already. The Bible never tells you a certain Sunday to have the Lord's Supper. The reality is you can do it every month. You can do it once a year. You can do it twice a year. That doesn't say anything about your faith. And so it's first Sunday, but we're not doing the Lord's Supper on today, but next Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, Bethel, we will celebrate the Lord's Supper on the day we celebrate his resurrection. Now, I need to give you a couple of instructions. This coming Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and I'm so thankful for my staff and my deacons, this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Tuesday and Wednesday, between the hours of 12 and 2, you can drive up under the canopy out front of the church on Bethel Baptist Street. Hear my instructions well. Don't go on First Street. Don't go on Rudolph McKissick Boulevard. No. Right out front, we're going to be under the canopy Tuesday and Wednesday from 12 to 2. All you've got to do is going to be like going to McDonald's, except it's going to be better. You can drive up under the canopy, let your window down, tell us how many cups you need. And we will prepare them and put them right in your hand. Roll your window up. Keep it rolling. Now you need to go home and put it in the refrigerator. 
put it in the refrigerator until Sunday. So that's Tuesday and Wednesday, 12 to 2. But then Thursday, because there are some people that work still, it will be 4 to 6. So Tuesday and Wednesday, 12 to 2. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Y'all give me that flyer. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. And we will celebrate our resurrected Lord and Savior. And we will have the Lord's Supper. So once again, Tuesday and Wednesday, 12 to 2, you come and you get your communion uh, sacraments. And then Thursday, 4 to 6, just drive up under the canopy and we'll give you what you need. Put it in the refrigerator and then next Sunday, we will celebrate the Lord's resurrection and the Lord's Supper. Friday, I'm so excited. Uh, this is the first year, probably 25 years, I, I, I'm going to be home on Good Friday. I'm normally somewhere preaching two or sometimes even three seven last word services we're not able to do that in this season because of the coronavirus so the Lord gave me an idea that many people have had as I've seen on social media this week we're going to do what I'm calling a virtual seven last words a virtual seven last words when the Lord laid that on my heart uh, he laid it on my heart there were many people I could have called from across the country, many friends that I could have called to participate in, but the Lord led me to do local pastors, to be an encouragement to our city. And so it's going to be a major day. Put that back on the screen for me. It's going to be a major afternoon beginning at 12 noon this coming Friday. It's going to be absolutely powerful. Bishop John Guns, Pastor Gary Williams, Pastor Teresa White, Pastor John Allen Newman, uh, Pastor H.B. Charles, Bishop Leofric Thomas, and then myself closing it out. We've got music that's going to be a part of the worship experience as well. So if you got friends that go to any of those churches, St. Paul or Hopewell or Heritage Christian Center, or the sanctuary at Mount Calvary, the, Sh the Shiloh Church, or Open Arms Fellowship. I'm encouraging you now to let your friends know that their pastor is going to be on the air starting at noon on Good Friday. It's going to be major. You can catch it once again on our Facebook page or on our website, thebethelexperience.com. Finally, Bethel, if you have your tithes and offerings, as has been, our trustees have been so faithful. And they are here again up under the canopy. You can leave right now. Uh, keep your phone, you know, on Facebook Live and listen. But you can bring your tithes and offerings to the church. It's first Sunday. It's so important. There are some things that the Lord has given me that we want to do as it relates to feeding uh, and dinners and, and things that we can do to impact the community. But y'all, we can't do it unless you remain faithful in your giving. Hear me, your faithfulness should not coincide with being in corporate worship. Your faithfulness in your giving ought to be because God's still been good to you. And so I want to encourage you to bring them, of course. You can also give them on Givelify. You can go to our cash app, The Bethel Experience, or you can do it right online at thebethelexperience.com. So Givelify, uh, our cash app, or the Bethel experience we had some problems with the website y'all so many folk were trying to get on that it kept going down but we think we've rectified that situation so you'll be able to watch on the website but your faithful stewardship is so important doing the, during this season and I want to urge and encourage each of you to right now get your tithes and your offerings ready you see it cash app give Lafay the church's website or you can bring it to the church between now and about 11:45, and our trustees are waiting there to receive your tithes and offerings or if not you mail them to the church even though the church office is closed we're getting our mail and you can mail it to the church as well but i need you in this season bethel to be extra faithful we're going to show the world a liar they say the economy is tanking, but not the economy of the kingdom. God's word is not void because the world is not right. And so I need you to give and watch. And I decree and declare blessings are going to overtake you. 
you're going to be blessed of the Lord. Come on, let's pray. Father, use me now for your own good pleasure. Use me, an imperfect vessel, to speak your perfect word. Thank you that the power of your word is not predicated upon the crowd in the pews. Thank you that my passion and conviction is not determined by who's hollering back at me. So use me now to not only bless those from Bethel who are watching, but everyone across the globe who's listening to this word. I declare deliverance, healing, and breakthrough in Jesus' name. Wherever you are right now, just yell, Amen. Now listen, take your Bible or take your copy of the Word of the Lord. and Go with me to the 11th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Y'all like, like my coat? Y'all know I act a fool, so I got to keep acting a fool. My wife bought this coat for me. Yeah, let me get right there. It's got scripture, scriptures on it. Is it it's on the back too? Yeah. Y'all see that? It's, it, it's got scripture. Yeah, there it is. It's got scriptures on there. Y'all like that? Now, Bethel, y'all know I act a fool when we together, so I, I can't not act a fool just because you home. Look at that. My wife's a bad mother. Shut your mouth. She bought this. It's, it's reversible. I ain't going to take it off, though, because I picked up some corona weight. So uh, y'all just have to trust me on that. All right. Go to the 11th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 11 and verse 1. Mark chapter 11 verse 1 I'm reading from the New International Version as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them go to the village ahead of you and just as you enter it you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden untie it and bring it here if anyone asks you why are you doing this say the lord needs it and we'll send it back here shortly they went and found a coat outside in the street tied at a doorway as they untied it some people standing there asked what are you doing untying that coat they answered as jesus had told them to and the people let them go when they brought the coat to jesus and threw their cloaks over it he sat on it Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the field. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Amen. I, I want to preach. I want to preach on this Palm Sunday morning. I want to talk about Christ or culture Christ or culture that there there are many things that happen during the time of the Bible that are actually not covered in the Bible there is much like what happens in America much of black history is not in the history books but just because they don't include it in the book doesn't mean it didn't happen in the world the same can be true about some events of the Bible because the reality is the Bible is not a book of history. The Bible is really a book of theology. The Bible is, in a real sense, our apologetic about who God is as creator, sustainer, controller, and savior of human history. It's, it's our story. It's our theology of the redemptive drama within the narrative of human history so the things germane to that theology are found in the bible and while there are some things that are not included in the bible that happened during biblical times there are some things that can still be impactful one of those things is one of the things i want to talk about today that's not in the book but i promise you it's a part of the story it happened on this very sunday that we celebrate every year called Palm Sunday where Jesus makes his journey into Jerusalem during what we call Holy Week. There is something else going on in Jerusalem that we do not see or read about in the Bible. On this day, the day of our text in Jerusalem, I don't know if you know it or not, but there were two parade processions entering the city at the same time. Yes, two. 
two parades entering the city at the same time. It was the beginning of the week of Passover. And we only get to see one procession. But in actuality, there were two. We see the one in our text, which is coming from the east, while the other one that is not seen is coming from the west. In the one in our Bible, we see Jesus riding on a donkey down the Mount of Olives, cheered on by followers and by curiosity seekers. But on the other side of the city, coming from the west, is this Italian Rome leader. We call him Pontius Pilate or Pontius Pilate. But if you really pronounced his name properly, it would be Pontius Pilate. And here he comes, the Roman governor, put in place because he's nothing more than a kisser. He is nothing more than somebody who would keep the Roman government where, sounds like a lot of politicians in today's time. He enters, Pontius Pilate, enters Jerusalem on the west end at the head of a column of imperial cavalry and soldiers. There were two processions, get it, going on at the same time, both wanting the same thing, trying to suggest the same message, but with different persons in mind. It's, it's the tale of two parades and the clash of two cultures, one representing the kingdom and the other representing the world. It's a tale of two differing and warring mindsets trying to have uh, supremacy over each other. And Jesus' procession proclaimed the kingdom of God. Pilate's proclaimed the power of empire. Pilate's procession displayed not only imperial power, but Roman theology. Because in the theology of Rome, the emperor was not just the ruler of Rome, but the son of God. <laughs> Jesus' procession deliberately countered and contradicted what was happening on the other side of town. Pilate's procession embodied power and glory and the violence of the empire that ruled the world. Jesus' procession gave an alternative vision of power through peace, not the absence of strife, but the presence of conviction. Because peace is not when everything is calm around me. Peace is when hell is all around me, but there's conviction inside me. These parades were a physical demonstration, I think, of what we deal with every day in life, Christ or culture. It's a modern day discussion that has more steam today than ever. We still live in a time where we are forced to make a choice of whether we're going to live by the kingdom of God or live by the culture of the day. Everywhere you turn, even in the church, the church is bending her will to the culture of the world. I'm not suggesting that you don't have to do those things that draw people. I'm not suggesting that we just sit in our churches and wait on the culture to come to us. No, that's not even biblical. Even in the Bible, Jesus sent them to the highways and the byways. That's not what I'm suggesting. But when the world or when the preferences or when the vision of the culture is more prominent in the church than the ways of the kingdom, that's when something's wrong. And every day of your life, you have to make choices between kingdom or culture. When you get invited to happy hour, when you get tempted to cuss somebody out, when you get tempted to talk what you think you know about somebody, every day you are tempted to make the choice between kingdom and culture. And on Palm Sunday, I put it in front of you again which parade are you going to the parade of the kingdom or the parade of the culture what's going to have more prevalence and prominence in your life what CNN says or what the word says what the president says or what God has already said every day you've got to make the choice which parade are you going to and what Jesus shows us in this text is that evil has to be defeated to be dealt with. It has to be confronted to be conquered. Get the picture, two parades. Rome wanted to be in control and to have 
authority and their parade was a sign and symbol of that desire to push forward rome wanted what would be called a domination system which was a way of organizing a city it was marked by political oppression economic exploitation birth in religious legitimization talk sir it was a world marked by political oppression yes where you couldn't vote political oppression where they wanted to declare even in the state of florida that although we voted for ex-offenders or returning citizens to have their rights to vote now they put things in place so that they try to keep them from voting political oppression where you are treated differently because of the color of your skin or because of some of the choices that you make yeah economic exploitation where they raise line your neighborhood economic exploitation where they put every kind of store in your neighborhood for you to spend your money instead of saving your money Rome sounds a little bit like what we deal with today right here in our country and then you've got the nerve of people who try to legitimize what they do by religion it happens right here economic exploitation when you've got prosperity theology that suggests to you if you throw enough money money on the altar then all of your problems are going to go away you're going to be debt free you're going to be a millionaire there's going to be a check in the mail in seven days it sounds like Rome to me and Rome would use these words to justify their religion but on the other side of town God help me Jesus orchestrated a counter demonstration process while they came in looking like royalty Jesus came in looking like humility and it was a day of choices God's way or the world's way and while the world's way seems to yield instant gratification the Lord's way don't miss this the Lord's way concentrates on permanence not on instance yeah you didn't get it I saw it go by you in your house I would rather have joy for a lifetime than happiness for a season god help me because when things make me happy i have to keep the thing that made me happy and when things that make me happy get taken from me my happiness is gone see whatever it took to get the happiness you will have to keep to stay happy but it took nothing to give me joy except God deciding to give it to me the old church put it this way this joy that I have yeah some of y'all can say it with me right in your house the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it you know what that means that means if I lose everything that makes me happy I still have the thing that gives me joy and that's Jesus Christ that's why the old folks said you can have all of this world just give me Jesus can I tell you something else about the parades one was made of royalty the other was made of peasants the people in the parade for Jesus that are shouting all over the place in Mark's gospel also in Luke and in John and Matthew's gospel they are nothing more than peasants you better get this they don't have much they don't live all that well but here they are in praise in spite of the fact that they don't have much else to offer I want to talk to somebody who's allowing your praise to be snuffed out. I want to talk to somebody who's allowing your praise to be snatched from you because you don't have what you used to have or you looked at your 401k the other day and it doesn't look like it's supposed to look. You better take a message from these peasants. I don't need much to praise God. All I need is my mouth because the Bible declares let everything that has breath pray. As a matter of fact, I know where you are and I know you might feel foolish, but I I want you to act like you in your own sanctuary and for the next five seconds open up your mouth and yell a praise to God you may not have the money you want you may be furloughed by your job your 401k may be messed up you may even have family members with corona but with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise with a heart of thanksgiving I'm gonna bless it watch what they do in the text the text says when they see Jesus <laughs> they take off some of their garments I know there are other scriptures that talk about how 
they climb the tree and they cut down the palms. But in this one, they take off their garments, hear me, for his benefit, as was befitting of the presence of a king. Because when you know who he is, it will cause you to lay some stuff down. Come here. I know you didn't like it. The evidence that you know who Jesus is are the things that you will lay down that you used to keep for yourself. Mm. If you've got some stuff you still doing that you haven't laid down yet, it becomes evidence that you have not fully submitted to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Because when I know he's the king of kings and when I know he's the lord of lords, there's some stuff I will lay down. They lay it down and they begin to praise him. I listened to my boy last night, Dr. William Houston Curtis, who talked about this praise was spontaneous. In other words they didn't wake up that day intending to praise him they didn't wake up that day intending to lay stuff down they didn't wake up that day intending to lift their hands but when they saw him something jumped in them that made them do what they didn't wake up I don't know who I'm talking to you didn't wake up this morning to shout in your kitchen you didn't wake up this morning to dance in your living room you didn't wake up this morning to give God a holy wave in your basement but if you know who he is when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me I want you real quick to just start doing something you didn't wake up to do you thought you would watch this sermon with your toast and coffee and your legs crossed but I dare you to put the coffee down put your hands together because you know who Jesus is notice a couple of things about the text the way Jesus enters and even the way Pontius Pilate enters is a statement about identity. Two different parades. Pontius Pilate coming in to make sure everybody knows he's the governor. And to make sure everybody knows Tiberius is the emperor. Jesus coming in just on a donkey. <laughs> Jesus knows that there's a bigger, more regal parade going on on the other side of town but Jesus does not compete but remains faithful to the call come here he knows on the other side of town they got chariots they got gold they got uniforms they got regality but Jesus said I just want y'all to go get a donkey <laughs> and bring that donkey back here to me and when you bring that donkey back here to me, yes, that's what I'm riding in on. Jesus knew that what he rode on couldn't compete with what Pontius Pilate rode in on. But Jesus didn't try to shift things to compete. Because when you know who you are, you don't have to do things to prove who you are. You better hear me. The manner in which Jesus enters the city is Jesus making a statement about his cause and his call, not his identity. Jesus makes a statement about his cause and the people in turn make a statement about his identity you missed it he just comes in writing what was prophetic fulfillment from Zechariah he rides in making a statement about his cause and his call but when the people saw him he let the people make the statement about his identity come here Pilate on the other hand has a procession that needs to make Make a statement about his identity and not his cause why because in the first place Pilate's identity was one he was given Jesus's identity was one he was born with preach boy the problem with Pilate's identity was his identity was wrapped up in a title but Jesus's identity was one he was born with and not voted into see that's one of the reasons why you have to learn how to be comfortable in your own skin you have to learn how to be comfortable with who you are tune back in tonight at 6 p.m because we're going to look at this story again and look at I did I got something at 6 p.m. that's going to help somebody see when you know that God made you and the purpose for which you were designed for you ain't trying to impress anybody you just walk in your calling Jesus teaches us a major lesson on this march y'all 
That is. Sometimes, get this, write this down, tweet this, Facebook it, put it on your Insta story. Sometimes, to be successful, you have to be comfortable with being misunderstood by the very people who should appreciate you. Mm. You better hear me. If you're going to walk in your calling, you got to be okay with folk who should appreciate you misunderstanding you. Mm. You better hear what I'm trying to tell you. See, we want people to appreciate us. We want people to lord over us. And while you want people to appreciate you, that is normal. Hear what I'm about to tell you. Don't confuse the fact with the reality that just because you appreciate me don't mean you get to define me, preach, sir. Just because you appreciate me don't mean you get to tell me who I am. See, the world will tell you who you are until you tell the world who you are. Yeah, where am I getting? Well, one of the more interesting scenes on that day is recorded by Dr. Luke. If you jaywalk over to Dr. Luke, you ain't got to do it. Just trust me. Jesus has come into Jerusalem to the praises of the people. And he comes into the city knowing that those who praise him don't understand him. And the leaders who see him don't want to receive him. Jesus. He knows that he is being rejected by one group now. And be, will be rejected by the group that praises him before the week is over. And as Jesus gets closer to the city, Luke says that Jesus begins to cry. Because he knows that he is dealing with a people who should love him but won't receive him. And if we were to use what we see from Jesus then and what we know from what he went on to do, we know that their rejection does not stop him from moving forward to do. As a matter of fact, if you really want to know the truth, it was their rejection that catapulted him to doing and being what he was supposed to be. I ain't got time to preach that. But why am I making this point today? Because too many people give up and walk away from assignments because of how others respond to them. Too many of us determine our success or our failure in a thing predicated on how people respond to us you got to be comfortable with yourself and comfortable in your identity and comfortable with your purpose and assignment you got to be like Jesus riding into Jerusalem with confidence knowing he was being misunderstood and rejected it was a statement of identity but then in this text, there is the power of your praise to make a statement. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, put your toast down, put your coffee down, free your hands, because this is the point. Whoever's watching with you, go ahead and apologize to them right now. Um, text says, they begin to shout, Hosanna! Blessed is he who's come in the name of the Lord. They begin to shout, Hosanna! God, help me in this room. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David. God help me here. It, it, it was a statement about who does and who does not have the power to deliver. Hmm. On the other side of town, here comes Pontius Pilate <laughs> and everybody shouting hail Caesar because they believe Caesar has the power to keep them there were some Jews on the other side because they believed if they just acted like they had loyalty to Rome that the Romans would leave them alone but there were some other folk on the east side yeah coming from out east <laughs> who were yelling Hosanna blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord y'all better hear me it was a bold statement of their declaration that Rome and her emperor do not have the power they think they do. Mm. That God has sent somebody with the power and more power than the powers that be could ever have. They were making a statement. Y'all think y'all got power in Rome. But we know God has sent us the only one who's got the real power. So that's where I'm placing my loyalty. In other words, your praise 
becomes a statement about your source and your resource preach it's a statement about who I trust to have the power to keep me and to deliver me they see Jesus riding on this donkey which becomes the New Testament fulfillment of an Old Testament prophecy what Jesus rides and the manner in which he rides becomes a statement as to his purpose in life and when they see him uh, they begin to shout that's where the power is y'all better hear me they begin to shout we know who is our source and we know who is our resource can I help somebody in here today that's why you need to be giving God the praise I know everywhere you look in this coronavirus you cannot go to one news station without finding bad news without hearing bad news you can't pick up the t newspaper without hearing bad news you would think from everything we hear that this virus is in control they can't find a cure people are dying quicker than they can heal them they can't find a cure they're telling everybody to wear masks because they don't know how to cure it but that ought not stop your praise because at the end of the day a virus can't take the victory Jesus Christ is the power Jesus Christ is the one and when people look at you and call you fake and phony and tell you you being a holy roller when they laugh at you because you refuse to get depressed in the midst of this pandemic situation you ought to tell them I ain't being a holy roller I just know where my power comes from I just know who the source of my help is and because I know that he is my source I've got to give him praise I'm trying not to get happy but if you got real conviction preacher you don't need a crowd yelling at you for you to get happy on your own sermon you got to do the opposite of the drug dealer you got to get high on your own supply because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me I praise him because he's my source and my resource Jesus sends those donkey, those disciples to get that donkey, loose him and be brought. And the people begin to praise God. It's an interesting little phrase. As they're on their way from the Mount of Olives, <laughs> this is going to get good, to Jerusalem. Mm. As they're on their way, from, I've been to the Mount of Olives four times. Uh, and you, you stand up on that mountain and you can see Jerusalem yes you're not there yet but you can see Jerusalem it's gonna get good in here to me they they are on their way yes to Jerusalem they 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 they, they are on their way God help me in here to Jerusalem yeah they're not in Jerusalem yet mm, but they're on their way to Jerusalem mm, y'all didn't get it yet I saw it go by you because you'd be waving your hands yelling at the screen telling me to preach Bishop they're not there yet mm, they're just on the way there but on the way there they begin to praise gee y'all didn't hear what I just said I don't know who I'm talking to today but I want to suggest to somebody we don't have the cure yet but we know we on the way there you don't have the long yet but you're on the way there you haven't fully recovered yet but you're on the way there so this next shout in your house is a shout because you can see it even though you ain't in it yet I don't know if you got somebody in your house but look at them if you're by yourself text somebody and tell them I'm a holler till I get it I'm a praise him because I see it I'm not gonna wait till I get there to praise him but because I'm on my way it's 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 a it's a prophetic praise it's a praise of expectation that things are about to get better it's a praise coming from the east side mm, saying that help yes is on the way my god that ought to make somebody shout you can go ahead and cut it off but don't you cut it off yet right now you ought to be saying help yes is on the way that ought to be your declaration right there every day when they get to that coronavirus briefing and the president stand president stands up there with his mumble and he talks about yes how bad things is and dr fauci gets up and talks about how bad things is and governor cuomo talks about how bad things is even governor DeSantis talks about how bad things is i want you to cut your tv off and throw your head back and just declare help y'all help me is on the way now here it is the help they got was different 
than they expected, but better than they anticipated. I'm done. I'm done. Y'all get ready to sing in a minute. Um, they thought Jesus came to bring them back to political prominence. They thought Jesus came back to overturn the Roman government. God help me in here today. But by the end of the week, they discovered that ain't what Jesus came to do. When they saw him on that cross, they decided that ain't the savior they were looking for. But I'm so glad that what he did on that cross is more powerful and better than anything he could have done in politics. He didn't do what they expected but he did better than they anticipated see they wanted situational deliverance but Jesus came to give sufficient deliverance wherever you are I just want you to holler sufficient deliverance yes I want to ask you a question has the Lord ever not done what you expected but what the Lord did do while it wasn't what you expected it was greater than you anticipated come here come on you can be honest right now I can't even see you but you thought the Lord was going to do one thing he ended up doing another and you didn't like it when he did it but when you saw what you got because he did it you had to give God praise because it wasn't what you expected but it was better than you anticipated he didn't down that cross for politics he didn't down that cross for Rome he didn't down that cross for Jews he did not down that cross for Republicans he didn't down that cross for Democrats he didn't down that cross for independence he died on the cross so that the world might be saved for God so loved the world yes that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and the reason you can shout today is because everything God does for you is showing that God is faithful I want you to just shake your hands with yourself come on you can't contaminate yourself shake your hand and just say God is faithful I might not get what I expected but I'm gonna get more than I anticipated because God is faithful go and holler at somebody real quick God is faithful throw your head back real quick and just yell God is faithful he's faithful and morning by morning New mercies I see. All I have needed, he's already provided. You better hear me. It might not be what you expected, but it's going to be greater than you anticipated because the faithfulness of God is not predicated on the situations of the world. When you yell Hosanna, what you're really yelling is that he is faithful. Y'all jump on that pipe as well and that piano and everything. I, I want to hear something about the faithfulness of God. He's, I, want you, I want you to hear it today. Yes, I want you to worship wherever you are that God is faithful. When you yell Hosanna, he's faithful. It may not be what you want, but it's going to be what faithful. Listen to me carefully today. I want to declare to somebody today, you shall not go broke. You shall not go under. This virus will not end our world because our God is faithful. That's all I know. I don't know about everything else y'all talk about. Everybody's asking the questions. Is this the end time? Is God mad with us? No, I don't go by that because God is faithful. Y'all around here trying to figure out the wrath of God when the wrath of God has already been dealt with. I ain't worried about the wrath of God. I'm too busy shouting over the mercy and the faithfulness of God. God is faithful. Listen to me. You don't know this faithful God. You don't know this Jesus. I want you to do something real quick. If you're watching me on Facebook, I want you to go over to the BethelExperience.com. Right on the front page is a, a pop-up that says Decision on Demand. I want you to open that. And if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to go in there and I want you to check the box that says Salvation. 
if you are saved I don't care where you are we've taken in members all across the country this week because we're getting ready to announce our e-church so if you're not in Jacksonville but you don't have a church you want to be a part of this ministry we're providing a way to make that happen so you go inside decisions on demand and you check the box for discipleship for everybody else for Bethel and everybody else this morning I need you to sow a faithful seed I need you to give your faithful you better hear me give your tithe and then give a seed on top of that because God is faithful you show God your conviction about his faithfulness by sowing your seed on that day they made sacrifice by low, laying down their clothes climbing trees and cutting down palms but today I want you to show your faithfulness I don't care who you are you may not even be a part of Bethel but if you're watching me I need you to go to give Levi to the Bethel Baptist Church or I need you to go to cash app and I need you to sow a seed right now bring it up to the church they're still here because God is a faithful God in all that he does now wherever you are I don't know where you are even if you can't sing sing it to yourself God is faithful great it is thy faithfulness come on sing it with me great is thy faithfulness every day morning by morning yeah new mercy say it wherever you are as we go off the air you remember God is faithful I'll see you at 6 p.m. tonight so you see go out in worship great is thy faithfulness Hosanna to the son of David peace